reached the point where I think I can still get up the steps under the stage, but it's easier using the communion table to make sure I don't trip or fall. Uh, welcome everyone to Christmas Sunday for Sunday in Advent. We're going to share today about the uh, celebrate the candle and uh, speaks of love. And also you'll see uh, the Christ candle has been lit. lit and we're going to talk about that today. Love divine. Our scripture lesson, there'll be several scriptures, but the first lesson I would like to read is John chapter 1, the first 14 verses, which speak of the coming of Jesus and the incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And all things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the dark, but the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all that might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. And there was the true light which was coming into the world and enlightens every man. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as did receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Let's pray. We thank you, our God and Father, for Advent and for this Christmas season, with all that's going on around us, all the distractions, and even more maybe this year because of a pandemic, sometimes it's hard to concentrate on the things of God. But we pray this morning as we approach Christmas Day and celebrate the birth of Jesus and the coming of our Lord, that you will bless our times together. Bless us this morning as we read scripture and as we talk about the things of the word and we ask Lord you would bless our understanding this morning as we celebrate together in Jesus name amen love divine today is the fourth Sunday in Advent and we have lit the love candle and also the Christ candle. We don't worship on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, and so it's our tradition to write, light the Christ candle on the fourth Sunday in Advent. And so that has been done as we celebrate the coming of Christ. I will attempt to hopefully make the connection this morning in the scriptures and by using some hymns of the uh, the connection between the Christ candle and the candle of love and what God has done for us to show us his love. In the scriptures and in the Greek language, there are four words for love. Agape, which generally is associated with God's love and the kind of love that as we are believers and attempt to become more like Christ, we would show to others. Storge, which means a family love, familial love, with your immediate family and those you're close to. Phileo sounds sort of like Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Phileo 
means just that. It's uh, friendship, brotherly love, both beyond family, but when you have a deep friendship with somebody, phileo might be the word that's used. And the fourth word is eros, which is the Greek word for romantic love or sexual love, and it is in the scriptures, but not very often. Um, love, the biblical definition, the biblical um, explanation of love is this. It's purposeful commitment to sacrificial action. Pers Let me say that again. Purposeful commitment to sacrificial action. And this is what we associate with God the Father, but also what Jesus accomplished by coming to earth. John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, full of grace and truth. So Jesus' time on earth, uh, he demonstrated the humanness that we could see God through what Jesus did on earth. And we know that Jesus will be celebrating in a few months Easter and Passover and the sacrifice that Jesus made when he gave his life on the cross. But I submit to you that some 33, 34 years in our human time before Jesus died on the cross, Jesus also made a sacrificial decision. And he decided to come and live on earth and be our Savior. Uh, it, John 3.16 was mentioned, and we understand uh, a couple of aspects about this. In John, the third chapter, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Now when Jesus comes again, second coming, he will be coming as judge. And finally, it says, he who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he does not believe in the name of the only begotten Son. The scripture uses the terminology God gave and God sent. But we shouldn't look at this terminology as being Jesus taking his marching orders from the Father. That in theological terms would be subordinationism and Jesus isn't subordinate to the Father. However, Jesus volunteered. Jesus wanted to come to earth to be our Lord and Savior. Let's look at Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians 2, Paul is instructing the people at the church at Philippi, and he's telling them to avoid certain behaviors and don't look merely after your own personal interest. But in verse 5, he begins this. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking on the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So, and for this reason, God highly exalted him afterwards and bestowed him the name which is above every name, 
so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. So Jesus Christ willingly came to be our Savior. The incarnation wasn't something just arranged by God the Father and made Jesus to do it, but Jesus willingly came to earth to be our Lord and Savior. I'd like to cite three hymns, one of them we've already sung this morning, but uh, I find there's great theology in most hymns and in these concerning the incarnation. I'd like you, if you have you're close to a hymnal or those at home can find one or not, just listen to the words of these hymns and think about this. The first one is number 237, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, 237 in your hymnal. Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, Joy of Heaven to Earth Come Down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. It's because of what Jesus has done, because he was willing to come down to earth from his Father's throne that we have a Savior. Secondly, we've already sang Heart the Herald Angels Sing, number 140 in your hymnals. Again, talking about the nature of Christ and what he was willing to do. You might notice in the first verse, it says, God and sinners reconciled. That was the final purpose of what Jesus did in coming to earth and giving his life so that we might be reconciled to God. But in the second verse, Christ, my highest heaven adore, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. Hail the incarnate deity. Pleased with man, as man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Jesus is God in flesh. We understand the nature of the Father and who it is that loves us through Christ coming to earth and being with us. And one more, number 399. This is one of my favorite hymns, and if you read through all the verses of this hymn, it explains the whole gospel and what God has done in the person of Jesus Christ. Number 399 in your hymnals, and I'm especially emphasizing the second verse. He left his Father's throne above, so free, so infinite, his grace. Jesus wasn't forced to do what he did, but he was willing to sacrifice his place next to the Father and come. So free and infinite is grace. Emptied himself of all but love and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all, immense and free. For oh my God, it found out me. Jesus came was willing to come to earth, willing to give his life, that God's grace might find you and me and anyone that's willing to accept him as their Lord and Savior. Next scripture I'd like us to look at, because it's transitioning from Jesus coming to earth and giving himself to what that means to us. Romans the fifth chapter.
Romans 5, beginning in verse 6. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And I trust that most of you here today, and hopefully all of us, have experienced the reconciliation that comes from God sending his son to be our savior and Christ being willing to be, to sacrifice himself to come and then to sacrifice himself a second time by his death on the cross. God reconciles us and demonstrates his love through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Next, let's go back to 1 John, the fourth chapter. 1 John 4, beginning in verse 7. Because of what's been done for us, and because of God's love, and we understand what that means for us, hopefully, our lives change and we're able to love others. John 4, beginning in verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, get this now, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected. As I read over that again for, I don't know, the hundredth time, or if I've used this before, I thought to myself, I'm not capable of that kind of love. I may have friendships, Storje, or Phileo. You have Eros, erotic love with your spouse. You're close to different people. But I only occasionally am capable of agape. It's easy to love people you care about, close friends, family. But the kind of love that the Bible talks about God giving his son and Jesus willing to come to earth to become flesh on our behalf, that kind of love I'm not capable of. Hopefully, as we fall deeper in love in Jesus, with Jesus, and we understand what he's done for us, his willingness to come and be made flesh, his willingness to give himself and be scourged and beaten and all that happened to him before the crucifixion, and to shed his blood on the cross for us. Hopefully that will give us an understanding of sacrificial love and what it means to show that kind of love to others. We exhibit a lot of love in this community 
in this church. We've taken care of families and different people. We feed the homeless. We've taken care of people for years and years. And sometimes, frankly, it seems like we haven't gotten much in return. But it's only when we come to understand what Jesus has done for us, are we any way capable of showing that love for others. I pray that you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know his love, and he's showing you how to abide in his love, that you might be more capable of loving others. One other scripture I'd like to share with you from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Second Corinthians 5, beginning in verse 14. For the love of Christ controls us, some translation says constrains, compels, you take the word that explains it to you the best, that means the most to you. The love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for he who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God, who reconciled us, to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've been commissioned to show that love to others. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I pray that you know the sacrificial agape love of Jesus Christ that's bought your salvation. And as I pray that as you come to know that and understand that more fully, that you will be an ambassador for Christ, showing reconciliation to our lost and dying world. Amen.